Introduction, Section Three, Part One. Section the Third, of the Laws of England. The municipal law of England, or the rule of civil conduct, prescribed to the inhabitants of this kingdom, may, with sufficient propriety, be divided into two kinds: the lex non scripta, the unwritten, or common law. And the lex scripta, the written, or statute law. The lex non scripta, or unwritten law, includes not only general customs, or the common law properly so called, but also the particular customs of certain parts of the kingdom, and likewise those particular laws that are by custom observed only in certain courts and jurisdictions. When I call these parts of our law legis non scripte, I would not be understood as if all those laws were at present merely oral, or communicated from the former ages to the present solely by word of mouth. It is true, indeed, that in the profound ignorance of letters, which formerly overspread the whole Western world, all laws were entirely traditional. For this plain reason. That the nations among which they prevailed had but little idea of writing. Thus, the British, as well as the Gallic Druids, committed all their laws as well as learning to memory. And it is said of the primitive Saxons here, as well as their brethren on the continent, that legis sola memoria eusu retinebant. But, with us at present. The monuments and evidences of our legal customs are contained in the records of the several courts of justice, in books of reports and judicial decisions, and in the treatises of learned sages of the profession, preserved and handed down to us from the times of highest antiquity. However, I therefore style these parts of our law legis non scripte, because. Their original institution and authority are not set down in writing, as acts of Parliament are, but they receive their binding power and the force of laws by long and immemorial usage, and by their universal reception throughout the kingdom. In like manner, as Aulus Gellius defines the jus non scriptum to be that which is tacito et illiterato. Ominum consensu emoribu expressum. Our ancient lawyers, and particularly Fortescue, insist with abundance of warmth that these customs are as old as the primitive Britons, and continued down through the several mutations of government and inhabitants to the present time, unchanged and unadulterated. This may be the case as to some. But in general, as Mr. Selden in his notes observes, this assertion must be understood with many grains of allowance, and ought only to signify, as the truth seems to be, that there never was any formal exchange of one system of laws for another, though doubtless by the intermixture of adventitious nations, the Romans, the Picts, the Saxons, the Danes, and the Normans. They must have insensibly introduced and incorporated many of their own customs with those that were before established, thereby, in all probability, improving the texture and wisdom of the whole by the accumulated wisdom of diverse particular countries. Our laws, saith Lord Bacon, are mixed as our language, and as our language is so much the richer, our laws are the more complete. And indeed, our antiquarian and first historians do all positively assure us that our body of laws is of this compounded nature, for they tell us that in the time of Alfred, the local customs of the several provinces of the kingdom were grown so various that he found it expedient to compile his dome book, or liber judicialis, for the general use of the whole kingdom. This book is said to have been extant so late 
as the reign of King Edward IV, but is now unfortunately lost. It contained, we may probably suppose, the principal maxims of the common law, the penalties for misdemeanors, and the forms of judicial proceedings. Thus much may at least be collected from that injunction to observe it, which we find in the laws of King Edward the Elder, the son of Alfred. Omnibus qui republicae presunt etiam atque etiam mando, ut omnibus aequos se praeban judices, perinde ac in judiciali libro, in parenthesis, saxonise, som vec. Scriptum habetur, nec qui cam formident, quin ius commune, in parenthesis, saxonise, folkrichte, audacter libereque dicant. But the interruption and establishment of the Danes in England, which followed soon after, introduced new customs and caused this code of Alfred in many provinces to fall into disuse, or at least to be mixed and debased with other laws of a coarser alloy, so that, about the beginning of the eleventh century, there were three principal systems of laws prevailing in different districts. One, the Mersenlage, or Mersen laws, which were observed in many of the Midland countries, and those bordering on the Principality of Wales, the retreat of ancient Britons, and therefore very probably intermixed with the British or Druidical customs. 2. The West Saxon Lage, or Laws of the West Saxons, which obtained in the countries to the south and west of the island, from Kent to Devonshire, these were probably much the same with the laws of Alfred above mentioned, being the municipal law of the far most considerable part of his dominions, and particularly including Berkshire, the seat of his peculiar residence. 3. The Danelage, or Danish law, the very name of which speak its original and composition. This was principally maintained in the rest of the Midland countries, and also on the eastern coast, the seat of that piratical people. As for the very northern provinces, they were at that time under a distinct government. Out of these three laws, Roger Hoveden and Ranulfus Sestrensis inform us, King Edward the Confessor extracted one uniform law, or digest of laws, to be observed throughout the whole kingdom, though Hoveden and the author of an old manuscript chronicle assure us likewise that this work was projected and begun by his grandfather King Edgar, and indeed a general digest of the same nature has been constantly found expedient, and therefore put in practice by other great nations, formed from an assemblage of little provinces, governed by peculiar customs, as in Portugal, under King Edward, about the beginning of the fifteenth century, in Spain, under Alonso X, who about the year 1250 executed the plan of his father St. Ferdinand, and collected all the provincial customs into one uniform law, in the celebrated code entitled Las Partidas, and in Sweden, about the same area, a uniform body of common law was compiled out of the particular customs established by the Lachman of every province, and entitled the Lands Lach, being analogous to the common law of England. 